All right, this is the Algebra 2 Practice ELC question 35, and it says, if f of x equals the square root of x squared minus 1 and g of x equals the square root of x minus 1, which expression represents f of x divided by g of x for any x greater than 1? Obviously, if the x was 1, then your denominator would be 0, which is undefined, which we can't, that can't happen. Okay, So we got to figure out what we're doing here. It says f of x divided by g of x, which means that we have this portion here, the square root of x squared minus 1, nice handwriting there, and then that sh should all be divided by g of x, which is just the square root of x minus 1. Well, this problem is actually really, really easy if you remember how to factor. Algebra 2, one of the most important skills you can take from that is factoring, okay? So if you look at your numerator, that only has two terms. So the first step with factoring is always try to figure out if you can take out a GCF. Well, there isn't a greatest common factor or something that you can take out of both of those terms, the x squared or the minus 1. So the only other thing that you can do with two terms is factor by using difference of squares. Okay? So difference of squares means that you have two binomials with different signs, one a plus, one a minus. Obviously, those are the two different signs. And then you have to take the square root of x squared. Well, the square root of x squared is x, and since that's on the left side of that problem, you're going to put that on the left side of both of your binomials. Okay? Well, the square root of 1 is just 1, and since that's on the right, you need to put that on the right side of both of your binomials. Okay? And then again, you just have your denominator, which was the square root of x minus 1. Okay. Well now, again, this problem is very easy because you're just dividing, which pretty much means that you're just canceling out the things that are similar. Okay? You have the square root, I'm sorry, you have an x minus 1 that's right here in your numerator, and you also have an x minus 1 that's right here in your denominator. So those are gone. Your denominator is completely gone now because there's nothing down there. And then your x minus 1 is also gone. Okay? So really, all that you're left with is the square root of x plus 1, and that's what's in your numerator, which if you factor correctly, again, this is one of those easy problems here, and you're going to find out that your answer is choice C. Good luck. I hope this helps. All right, um, we're going to add a little extra part to 35 just because of the fact that, you know, the factoring stuff is great, but sometimes you get on test day, and if you're a bad test taker especially, you just have those, oh, man, I can't remember how to do this moments, and you want to graduate, I get you. So here's something you can do in questions like this that have one variable in them or one type of variable, so this one has x, and the answers are in variables as well. Now, if it comes with a solution answer, this won't work, but by the way, I should mention I'm not proud that we're going to show you this. It doesn't make me feel good in my heart. I don't feel like we're beating the test, blah, blah, blah. But this is like, you know, crunch time. I forgot everything because of uh, nervous anxiety time. This is what you can do. The reality is you need to make sure that your variable that's in the calculator, your x, has a value. So I'm going to go here, hit the variable button, and hit enter. Mine is 10. If it's not 10, you can fix it. All you have to do is go into the window. If it's 0, this method doesn't work, by the way. Um, you change your x max and x min to something else, so say I wanted to change them to 5. So I just change it to 5. Well, it would help if I'd not hit clear and hit delete instead, but you know, whatever. And then I'm going to go into the y equals section, and you have to graph something to lock it in. So graph something linear and graph it. That should lock it in. Now I can quit out and go back to my original stage, and now you see x is 5. It locks it in how I want it. The reality is the question asks you to do f of x divided by g of x. Well, you can do that, but the, rea uh, the thing is, the way my calculator set up, I can't do it as a fraction, so I'm going to have to put the top part in parentheses or the numerator, and the bottom part, the denominator, in parentheses as well. So I'm going to set the um, parentheses there, and then I'm going to know that f of x is the square root of x squared minus 1. So I'm going to go type that in. So x squared minus 1, but the issue is you have to close out that uh, square root and then close out the parentheses that you had to indicate it was the numerator. Now I'm going to divide by the denominator. Once again, parentheses, and it's, yeah, the square root, I've lost my mind for a second, sorry about that. Sometimes I stare up at the screen and even I forget. So you want to close out the square root and the parentheses, so you should have 2 on top and 2 on the bottom in this case. Then hit enter. 
this number has no numeric value whatsoever to the problem. This is just a trick. Like I said, I'm not proud that this works, but it does in many cases work. And this is the last ditch effort. Do not suggest this mathematically, but it is what it is. Um, from here, I'm just going to type in my answer choices. See how those two numbers don't match? What I'm looking for, I'm going to write it over here, is 2.449, blah, 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 blah. Then I'm going to try my next one, square, uh, the square root of x minus 1, and then hit enter there. It doesn't give me the number I'm looking for, but if I try the last one, square root of x plus 1, it gives me the number. So the number for this answer matches the number at the top. And I lost the calculator there for a second. But the number that I punched in at the top matches that question. So it actually works. Sometimes it's a good idea to try all four answers, because occasionally you'll get some that are just the same question uh, set up in different ways. So if it is, make sure you get the one that's the most uh, broken down, that you've factored out the most stuff possible. Pick the one that's the most factored. So try all four of your answers. If you only get one that matches the answer, that's the answer in most cases. This is a last case scenario. Don't be dependent on this. Learn to do the math the real way because you're not going to be able to use this if it's not multiple choice. But we wanted to show it to you anyway in, all, in full disclosure. So good luck.